So what I would like to do is um, to continue the discussion of the first course uh, on linear algebra to discuss the notion of uh, inner product space. Okay. So let me start with the notion of inner product spaces. See the notion of um, vector space generalizes the concept of addition of vectors, uh, scalar multiplication that uh, one is familiar with uh, after doing a course on two dimensional or three dimensional geometry. The notion of inner product allows us to generalize the notion of dot product of vectors say which we have studied for two dimensional three dimensional vectors. This uh, also allows us to talk about angle between vectors when uh, vectors are uh, orthogonal in a general vector space. The notion of inner product also allows us to talk about the notion of a norm of a vector. Norm of a vector is informally the distance, distance function. So norm, once you have a, once, once you have an inner product, you define a norm and through the norm you can define the notion of distance between vectors, uh, etc. Okay. So first we will discuss the notion of inner products. So let me start with the definition of an inner product. Uh, it is convenient to start with uh, complex vector spaces to introduce the notion of an inner product. So I have a complex vector space. Uh, so the first notion is uh, inner product and uh, inner product spaces. Okay. So I have uh, V as uh, Cn, okay, the space of uh, vectors with n coordinates, each coordinate is a complex number, Cn over C, that is the usual notation, V is uh, Cn, an inner product on V, an inner product on a vector space, an inner product on V is uh, a function is a function which we will denote using these two brackets dot comma dot. This is a function from uh, the cross product v cross v to c. So in general it is a complex number. The inner product is a function on the cross product. The inner product on v is a function on the cross product. It takes complex values, satisfies the following is a function which uh, satisfies the following conditions. First condition, okay, I will call it 1, 2, 3, etc. First condition is inner product of uh, x, comma x. This must be non-negative for all x and v. The inner product of x with itself must be a non-negative real number. That is the first condition. And as part of the fir first condition, we also have inner product of x comma x equal to zero if and only if x is equal to zero. This is part of the second condition. Okay. V cross V is something like uh, the set of all x comma y, x and y coming from V. This function, in particular, must satisfy this condition. That's the first uh, condition. Second condition is. Uh, if you look at inner product of uh, x plus y comma z, this must be inner product of uh, x comma z plus inner product of y comma z. It is like additivity with respect to the first argument, additivity with respect to the first argument. This must be true for all uh, x, y, z in V. Condition 3, you look at the inner product of lambda x comma y, okay, look at the image of lambda x comma y under this function, this is, this must be lambda of the image of x y, this is true for all lambda in C and for all x y in uh, V, that is my uh, third condition. Condition 4 is uh, in a product uh, yx, the image of yx is the complex conjugate of the image of x comma y. 
this must be true for all x y element of V. These are the four conditions that uh, an inner product on a vector space must satisfy and for convenience we are taking this vector space to be the complex vector space complex vector space cm okay mm, there are some names associated with these uh, conditions the first one is called uh, positive definiteness first one is positive definiteness positive definiteness of the inner product it is greater than or equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 if and only if x is 0. So first property is positive definiteness second and third is linearity with respect to the first variable 2 and 3 together is linearity of the inner product with respect to the first we can say argument or the first variable linearity with respect to the first argument we can understand what uh, why why it is linearity you have these two notions additivity and then uh, addi addition of vectors how does it behave with respect to that with respect to the first argument similarly scalar multiplication okay fourth one is called uh, conjugate symmetry property 4 is conjugate symmetry okay property 4 is conjugate symmetry in general an inner product is not uh, linear with respect to the second argument I will give an example okay but before that let us look at uh, examples of inner products but even before that let me tell you that uh, a vector space this notation we will adopt a vector space V together with uh, an inner product is called an inner product space and the notation uh, for an inner product space will be usually V comma this inner product when the inner product is uh, clear from the context we will not uh, use this we will simply say V is an inner product space when the inner product is clear okay so let us look at examples of inner product spaces. what I have done is to give an example uh, uh, to start with V as C n okay I will start I have started with V as C n this definition can be given over a general vector space V okay but let us look at the first uh, few examples this will be over C n R n etc. So first example uh, let us take uh, V to be R n see if you if you go back to this uh, if you go back to this example you will see that no property of cn has been used what I want is a complex vector space okay what I want is really a complex vector space so I can replace this as well by a complex vector space okay so I will simply say or v equal to cn or any complex vector space the property of cn has not been used what I need is just a complex vector space or any complex vector space which can also include real vector space so I look at uh, V as R n so this is a real vector space R n over R that is what this means so what is a usual inner product usual inner product for two or three dimensional vectors we will extend it to R n okay so let us take uh, let us take x y n r n and uh, the notation as before will be 
x equal to x1, x2, etc., xn, and only for convenience we are writing it as a row vector. So x is this, y is y1, y2, etc., yn. If these are the coordinates of the vectors x and y, then the inner product on Rn, this is called the usual inner product. We will define this to be summation i equals 1 to n xi yi. Summation i equals 1 to n xi yi, coordinate wise product or component wise product. This is the definition. Then you can see that this satisfies the four conditions listed here. First condition is inner product of x with itself will be summation i equal to 1 to n xi square. Each xi is a real number. So this sum is non-negative and each term is non-negative. So the sum can be 0 if and only if each term is 0. Each term 0 means xi is 0 for all i. So first condition satisfied. Second condition is satisfied, we have verified. Look at x plus y z. The inner product is uh, linear with re this inner product is linear with respect to the first argument. In fact, with respect to the second argument also. Okay, but that's that's not what we want. Two and three are satisfied trivially. You can you can check uh, two and three. Four is satisfied without the bar because it's a real space. Okay, so this is one example. It can be a real space and I have a real inner product space. So Rn with the usual inner product is an inner product space. So let us look at Cn and uh, introduce uh, an inner product. Second example, V is Cn as before uh, x and y will be represented by the coordinates x1, etc., xn, y1 etc y n this time the inner product is is defined as uh, summation i equals 1 to n x i y i bar x i y i bar this is the definition for a complex uh, for uh, c n now you will see why you need the bar here oh, by the way each coordinate here is a complex number. Y i bar means it is a complex conjugate. Okay. Why do you need this? You see, if you just take x i y i, it will not be an inner product. Okay. Please, you take this as an exercise, little exercise. It will not be an inner product. For instance, what is uh, inner product x comma x? Inner product x comma x is summation i equals 1 to n x i x i bar. Okay that is summation i equals 1 to n mod x i square. Now this is the reason why you need the complex conjugate here. You Now this is a uh, sum of non-negative real numbers. So this must be greater than or equal to 0 and uh, if it is equal to 0 then uh, each since each term is non-negative each term must be 0 if it is equal to 0. If the modulus of a complex number is 0 then the complex number itself must be 0. So each xi will be 0 and so x is 0. Okay, that is the reason why you need the complex conjugate here. I think I, I will leave it uh, for you to verify that it satisfies the other 3 conditions. Okay, so this is, uh, this is the usual inner product on Cn. This is the usual inner product on Rn. Okay. Okay, maybe I will just uh, write it down. This inner product, the above inner product inner product is referred to as the usual inner product or the standard inner product on C n, usual inner product or the standard in a product on Cn. We can do a little more general for the third example. We can do a little more general than, uh, than what we have done for Cn. We can take uh, n positive real numbers. Let uh, T1, okay, I will call it W1, W2, etc. 
W n be positive real numbers. I have n positive real numbers for uh, x y in uh, C n I can define an inner product with respect to these numbers with respect to these numbers this is another inner product so I will call it maybe inner product uh, w inner product with respect to w w denotes the set of numbers w n etc w n each of uh, them being positive. So this inner product is just an extension of the above it is summation i equals 1 to n use these uh, positive real numbers these are called weights use these positive real numbers and then define as before x i y i bar these are called weights the rest is as before you need them to be positive in order for the positive definiteness of the inner product to be satisfied in order for condition 1 to be satisfied you need them to be positive not non negative even if one of them is 0 it will not be an inner product. So you can verify that this is an inner product this reduces to example 2 when uh, each of the w i's is 1 okay. So this is more general than this this uh, sometimes we may use this let us look at other examples these are for r and c n let us look at uh, c n cross n the space of matrices my fourth example will be the space of matrices v is uh, c n cross n so c n cross n uh, is the vector space uh, complex vector space of uh, matrices of order n by n complex vector space means that the entries of the matrix are complex numbers. So what is the inner product what is one possible inner product on v so let us take uh, a b in uh, v let us recall the notion of the trace the trace of the matrix A let us uh, denote it by T R A trace of A is defined as see it is a square matrix is defined uh, by we have seen this definition earlier trace of A is uh, summation i equals 1 to n a i i where the notation is uh, a is uh, a i j if the entries of a are denoted by a i j then I look at the sum a 1 1 plus a 2 2 etc plus a n n that is the trace of the matrix this is a linear this is a linear function for uh, a star this is a bar transpose a star will denote a bar transpose by a bar I mean the complex conjugates of the entries of a and then I take the transpose that will be denoted by a star okay what is the inner product uh, let us define inner product of 2 vectors in V two complex matrices to be trace of a b star trace of a b star okay. So can you derive the formula for the trace of a b star in terms of the entries of a and b. If you are given the entries of a and b what is the formula for the trace can you make a guess first that is what you expect to happen yes because the diagonal entries will remain the same the same my question is what is the guess for trace of a b star the answer is summation i equals 1 to n a i i b i i bar let us see whether that is correct see given two matrices let us first do the 
let us first compute the ar uh, arbitrary element of the product. Uh, let us say I use C and D. C is uh, C i j, D is D i j. Suppose I want to compute the Rth component of the product C D. See I will assume C and D are uh, in uh, V. Okay, so matrix multiplication is uh, possible both sides C D D C both uh, multiplications are uh, valid. Look at C D. For the product C D let me calculate uh, say Rth component. What is the Rs component of CD? Summation CRK DKS K equals 1 to N. Okay. This is the Rs component. Okay. What is the Rs component of uh, AB star now? summation k equals 1 to n a b star for a I have c that is a r k b star see it is the k s the component of b star s k component of b b s k of course it will go with a bar okay now I want to put r equal to s Okay, and then I want to sum it over S, isn't it? I must sum it over S. Oh, oh, I put R equal to S. I have not made the appropriate change. I'll call this S. On one side I have R, and the other side I have S. Okay, so this is the formula for the S the component of AB star. This is the diagonal element of AB star. I must sum all the diagonal elements. So what is the formula then? So I write that here. Trace of AB star is double summation. I have used R and S, but I will come back to the usual I and J. I equals 1 to N, J equals 1 to K, sorry, J equals 1 to N, AIJ, BIJ bar. Okay, so this is the formula. Please uh, check this after going home. So this is a formula for the trace of uh, AB star. And so this is the final formula in terms of the entries of A. So please verify that this uh, is again an inner product on this complex vector space V. Okay. Now all these are finite dimensional spaces. Let us look at one uh, example from infinite dimensional spaces. Okay, so let us look at uh, one last example coming from infinite dimensional space. One last example of an inner product space. Let us consider V as uh, C01. The space of complex valued continuous functions on the closed interval 01. The vector space of all complex valued continuous functions. On zero one. Okay, we know that it's a vector space, and we also know that it's an infinite-dimensional vector space. It does not have a finite basis. For uh, two elements uh, in V, let's define the inner product by. Uh, so, what is the most natural? Uh, just integral. These are continuous functions, so integrals. Uh, exist. So simply look at 0 to 1 f of t since they are complex functions you have to imitate uh, what you did for the discrete case g t bar okay. d t for f and g from v. Then uh, remember uh, the first one is as it is second one goes with a bar that is why this is conjugate uh, symmetric 
that is it is not linear with respect to the second variable but conjugate linear with respect to the second variable linear with respect to the first variable linear with respect to the first argument but it is the first property which is important to verify first property is inner product f comma f see that is in the integral 0 to 1 mod f square dt it is a non negative function and we know from Lebesgue integration if you want that it is a non negative function and it is 0 the if and only if the integrand is 0 it is a continuous function if the integral is zero, continuous non negative function mod f t square dt continuous non negative function if the integral is 0 then the integrand must be 0 okay. So it is you, you need to use uh, techniques from integral calculus in some cases to verify that certain inner products are really inner products. So you please verify the other condition this is an inner product space V together with this is an inner product space. Okay, so that is a, a quick review of the definition of an inner product and an inner product space. I want to move on to the notion of a non linear space, okay. But I will be interested in uh, first uh, norms which are induced by inner products, okay. So let us uh, look at the following I have an inner product space let uh, V be an inner product space the norm well, let us take an arbitrary element in V the norm of X the norm of X denoted uh, by this denoted by this is defined by norm x is the positive square root of the inner product of x with itself the norm of a vector in an inner product space. So we are looking at the norm the so called norm induced by an inner product okay is it well defined we are taking the square root of uh, a number if you look at the inner product uh, space the first uh, first condition uh, you know that this is a non negative number so and I am also taking the positive square root of this okay. So uh, this is a non negative real number to begin with the norm of a vector is a non negative real number okay. So let me list the properties that this uh, satisfies. Uh, first property I will just write down so norm of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all x and v suppose norm x is 0 suppose norm x is 0 okay that happens if and only if uh, norm x square is 0 if and only if inner product uh, x with x is 0 which happens we know if and only if x is 0 okay. So this norm uh, has this property something similar to the property of an inner product positive definiteness. What are the other properties I will uh, list them in the form of uh, a result. let uh, V be an inner product space then the following uh, properties hold property 1 is uh, look at norm of uh, alpha times x norm of alpha times x is uh, mod alpha norm x 
mod alpha and omega. So, this is true for uh, all alpha in uh, C and uh, for uh, x uh, in V. Condition B. Look at the inner product of uh, modulus of the inner product of uh, x with y. This is less than or equal to norm x into norm y. This is true for all x, y in V. This is called the cauchy schwarz inequality which you may have encountered in some other context. This is called cauchy schwarz CH inequality. Cauchy Schwarz inequality connecting the inner product and the norm, it is an inequality. Property 3 is uh, norm of x plus y it is less than or equal to norm x plus norm y for all x, y in V. This is property 3, this is called triangle inequality. Okay. Triangle inequality. Okay, let us prove this uh, quickly. See, this is a defining equation for the norm. The defining equation for the norm is this, and in uh, in probably all the cases, we will take norm x square as uh, inner product of x with x and prove all these. So let us start with uh, the first one. Consider uh, uh, in a consider norm alpha x the whole square. By definition, this is in a product of alpha x with itself. For the first one, alpha comes out. For the second one, it comes with a conjugate. Okay. Alpha alpha bar mod alpha square norm x square. On the left, I have uh, square of uh, norm alpha x. I can take the positive square root because this is norm is non negative, modulus is non negative, again norm is non negative. I can take the square root to get uh, norm alpha x to be mod alpha norm x. That is the first property. Okay, then Cauchy Schwarz inequality. Consider uh, the following we have for uh, all lambda in C, for all lambda in C from the inner product, from the inner product, we have 0 less than or equal to x minus lambda y, comma x minus lambda y, first property of the inner product applied to the vector x minus lambda y. For all x, y in V. Expand this using the norm. So this is uh, equal to inner product x with x, inner product x with the minus lambda y that will go with the conjugate minus lambda bar x comma y. This term minus lambda y x. The last one will go with the lambda lambda bar that is mod lambda square, mod lambda square norm y square, okay. I can rewrite the first one and uh, call it norm x square, that is what it is. So this is non negative. Let me call alpha as the number uh, lambda bar x comma y. Alpha is the number complex number lambda bar x comma y. Then the second term is uh, alpha bar. Uh, I mean the second term is alpha. The third term is alpha bar. Okay. So this right hand side. So let me go to the other board. I think I'll remove this now. 
okay so what i have is uh, 0 less than or equal to norm x square plus uh, so let me take uh, the term corresponding to y mod lambda square norm y square that's the last term and uh, club the other two it is uh, uh, plus 2 times alpha plus alpha bar okay where alpha is lambda bar x y alpha is a com yeah minus 2 times is that okay both go with the minus sign y2 there is no need for 2 yes but alpha plus alpha bar that is the real part 2 times the real part so this is equal to norm x square plus mod lambda square norm x square minus 2 time real part of alpha okay now this is true for all lambda I look at a particular uh, value for lambda okay set uh, lambda to be uh, inner product uh, x y in this order divided by norm y square okay if norm y is not 0 that is if y is not 0 so let me rewrite if y is not 0 y equal to 0 case okay, so we need to consider okay we will come to that but that is very easy so let us look at the case when y is not 0 when y is not 0 this number lambda is well defined for this lambda this inequality holds so what happens to this inequality let us just check that so let me call this 1 inequality 1 in this case becomes 0 less than or equal to norm x square plus mod lambda square this is modulus uh, in the product x y square by norm y to the 4 and uh, this goes together with norm y square minus 2 times real part of alpha now what is alpha alpha is lambda bar x y okay from the previous calculations alpha is lambda bar x y what is lambda bar x y in this case so let us make that uh, calculation somewhere here what is alpha alpha is lambda bar x y which is uh, lambda is lambda bar is again modulus in a product x y the whole square by norm y square this is alpha which is a real number in fact a non negative real number so its real part is itself so this term is minus 2 times so I remove this minus 2 times modulus in a product x y the whole square by norm y square okay for this choice of lambda alpha is a real number non negative real number in fact so I get this inequality y is not 0 so norm y is positive I can multiply the road by norm y square of course this this can this can be cancelled so this goes with 2 so I will have just these two so I am doing this uh, here itself the simplification of cancelling norm y square in the second term now I multiply throughout by uh, norm y square y is not 0 norm y positive inequality will remain so I get 0 less than or equal to I am multiplying throughout by norm y square so norm x square norm y square this term has a norm y square in the denominator that vanishes plus this minus norm y square will get cancelled with this I get a plus modulus in a product square minus 2 modulus in a product square that will go with a minus sign minus modulus in a product square you push this to the left hand side you get and take the square roots which can be done because uh, this is modulus square non negative this is non negative norm this is non negative so you get uh, cauchy schwarz inequality okay so what is crucial is this choice of lambda let me prove the last one cauchy uh, i am sorry uh, triangle inequality and then stop let's uh, consider 
norm x plus y the whole square. This is uh, by definition inner product of x plus y with uh, itself again expand this this is first term norm x square the last term norm y square plus y with x plus x with y. Uh, this is uh, z plus z bar z is a complex number 2 times real part of z bar. So this is norm x square plus norm y square plus 2 times real part of x comma y. But the real part of a complex number, uh, what is the relationship between the real part of a complex number and the modulus? Z equal to yeah, alpha plus ib. Then uh, mod z square is alpha square plus beta square. But uh, alpha is less than or equal to modulus alpha. Is uh, less than or equal to okay there is alpha and beta real numbers alpha less than or equal to okay all that I want to say is this is this clear real part of z less than or equal to modulus of z take the square root of this you get this. So real part is less than or equal to modulus of that so this one will be less than or equal to so maybe I can remove this okay. So this real part is less than or equal to norm x square these 2 terms plus uh, what did I write 2 times modulus of the complex number. Now apply Cauchy-Schwarzen equality. This is uh, less than or equal to norm x square plus uh, norm y square plus mod x y that is 2 times norm x norm y but this is uh, norm x plus norm y the whole square. What is inside the bracket is a non-negative number and uh, this is a norm square so both are non-negative I can take the square root. So norm x plus y is less than or equal to norm x plus norm y. Okay, so that is uh, the triangle inequality. I remember that uh, in Cauchy-Schwarz inequality I did not consider the case y equal to 0 okay but it is trivially satisfied is not it. If y equal to 0 norm y is 0 so this part is 0 and we know that uh, x comma 0 is 0. We do not know that x comma 0 is 0 but you can you can prove that it is 0 so that is uh, that is the exercise in any inner product space V the inner product of a vector with the 0 vector will be 0 inner product of x comma 0 is 0 that is not part of any of the conditions but you can prove it okay. So in that case when y is 0 this is satisfied trivially okay so let me stop here. Tomorrow we look at uh, see we looked at the inner product that is uh, rather we looked at the norm induced by the inner product we look at a general norm definition of a general norm just for completeness and look at the notion of uh, orthogonal uh, or the, the notion of orthogonality in a vector space and probably if time permits uh, discuss the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process okay. So let me stop here.